to in Quentrill 2008. This is a, the first time that we will be holding a series of, of convocations or symposiums of this nature. So I, it is with great delight that I would like to welcome you all today. As I mentioned before, this is a culmination of a very, very um, focused effort between ourselves and the University of Madrid. So it is with great delight that we are here today. It is not, in, this is intended to be a symposium that leads to a, big con a larger conference that we will have in April 2008. So it, is, so it is not intended to be a solution-based process right now, but we do intend to point to some serious positive things that we think are happening within the basin, the Euro-Mediterranean basin. On my left here, you will notice uh, a poster entitled Le Trois, A Third Perspective. The Euro-Mediterranean Progressive Policy Institute is intended to be the third perspective. It is intended to make the tough decisions, not left or right, but to focus us on the difficulties that we have to, that one must go through to enable progressive, sustainable development and decisions, decisions and development. This morning I shared with a few of our colleagues here that the first grant that was given by GSET, the Global Institute for Strategic Economic Development, was given to a student at the Lehigh University who had fled his country in Tanzania as a result of personal harm because he was doing his work. He was making tough decisions and doing the things that others would not dare do. This young man was a, was a son of a past Minister of Foreign Affairs of Tanzania and is an economic student. He ended up working within a World Bank funded project and after a few months realized that there was corruption taking place, massive corruption. He then wrote a report. The first report led to a few death threats. He then wrote a second report, and his family received death threats. He then was able to, with the help of a few Western governments, get to Switzerland, and ended up in Lehi at Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. What his experience was, is that he was willing to fight and to do the difficult, to make difficult decisions for the betterment of his country. We published his report. G said was the only organization that would give him the funds to publish that report. It was the first publication that we did. No single press in the United States would publish, would be the, we needed a big press to, uh, to, to print the report. It was eventually printed with the help of the Lehi Koka Institute at Lehigh University and the Lehigh University itself. And so, going back to our original history, we have always wanted to support those people that dared to think differently, that dared to be progressive. Progressive, th progressive policies are not easy policies. They're not meant for the faint-hearted. So today, we are going to be welcoming and be, be actually... Sorry. We, will, we will have the chance to actually be... We actually have the chance to be in the presence of one of the leaders in the Euro-Mediterranean Basin who launched many initiatives during his, his active time uh, in, in, in leadership in government. In, in regards to progressive policies within the Euro-Mediterranean region. Without any further ado, I would like to invite the Honorable His Excellency Dr. Marco, Dr. Guido De Marco to come forward to give us a, a welcome speech. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. 
we are facing a problem with that data. We have new so-called philosophers who say that we have reached the end of history. When the Cold War ended, the idea was the end of history for Kriyama. But the new philosophy is that is, the future lies in conflict of civilizations. When we speak about conflict of civilizations, they believe that between the so called West, which incorporates Europe and the United States and other countries, and Islam, there is bound to be a conflict. We happen to be here, all of us here, now today are in Malta. Malta happens to be at the center of the center. If you were to accept this philosophy of conflict, it means that we are saying to our children, to our grandchildren, that Malta has to be the center of a conflict between the West and the Zion. Because when the pseudo-philosophers advance the philosophy of conflict, they are not saying it's a conflict between Buddhism and Islam. What they mean to say is that this is a conflict between Christianity and Islam. Civilizations do not Religions do not conflict. People do conflict. Persons who want to instrumentalize civilization or a religion may create conflicts, but not civilizations, not religions. And we here in the Mediterranean are the birthplace of the three great monotheistic religions. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Here is the birthplace of these three great religions, three great monotheistic religions. How are we to move? What do we believe is the future of our region? Is it true that this is going to be the region of conflict for the future? If it is so, then we as politicians of the Mediterranean have failed. We have to ensure what is the right direction for us. If the Mediterranean is going to be divided in two, in conflict with each other, the European part in conflict with the southern part, if it means that few kilometers away from is a place of conflict. We are really putting, hypothecating our future to a future where our children and the children of those who live in just southern part of us will end up against each other. We can make of the Mediterranean either a sea which brings us together or can make of it a sea of conflict. So when with Mr. Samson we started discussing this symposium here, yeah, I tried to focus the attention on what this foundation can mean to make us all more aware of what the Mediterranean is. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I wish you success in this discussion. At this time, I'd like to invite Joachim Tamara Espot of the Ministry of Home Affairs in Spain to speak to us, share his practical experience uh, as we will invite his Senegalese colleague in a few minutes. In primer lugar, respecto de la inmigración legal, entendiendo 
que la migración se presenta como una oportunidad pretende dar respuesta a dos desafíos que se presentan de forma distinta a un lado u otro. Es decir, como decía el expresidente hace un momento, evitar cualquier núcleo de conflicto derivado de malos entendidos o de malos entendimientos o de conflictos, cualquiera sea su naturaleza religiosa, cultural o social. Para ello es fundamental proveer mecanismos activos por parte del Estado que permitan la formación por una parte, el conocimiento de la lengua, el conocimiento de las instituciones del país, la realidad del país del destino, de destino y sobre todo el reconocimiento de algunos derechos básicos que permitan eh, verse reconocidas o verse legitimadas a estas personas. Cette coopération aussi avec l'Espagne tient compte parfaitement de cette donne et aide le Sénégal à se doter des moyens de contrôler, d'encadrer, non seulement de démanteler les réseaux, mais également de surveiller nos portes. Parce que nous avons 700 km de portes, c'est-à-dire que nous n'avons pas les moyens avec nos mêmes possibilités de l'oublier en développement pour pouvoir le gérer avec efficacité. De ce point de vue, il y a un acte extrêmement important de cette coopération. Alors, tout ceci pour dire quoi euh, La quatrième donnée. Troisième donnée, une quatrième donnée importante qui marque cette coopération, c'est justement cette approche qui consiste à avoir, à avoir une vision à la fois et sécuritaire et de développement du problème de la migration. Jusque-là, les logiques dominantes sont des logiques de sécurité. Just before we uh, break, I would like to do two things we'd like to do. First, I'd like to welcome the Shadow Minister, the Honorable Helena Dali. Member of Parliament, and also Mr. Robert Metcalf, this Vice President of the International St Student Movement of the United Nations. Welcome. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, two, two, the, the two presenters, the two main presenters, to uh, receive an award that we're presenting to them.